The world that we live in today is sick yeah. and it's it's in pain. This whole planet is like a ball of pain and it's mostly over this kind of stuff. Hi everyone, welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast. This is where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I talk through the real stuff of living it. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley and Jay, and you should consider yourself one of us now. Come on in here and let's talk it out together. Joyce is with us. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and you guys are twins. You guys yeah, we're are. dressed alike. Blue thing going on I today. love it. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Oh, you're welcome. We appreciate I it. Just kind of felt that you needed me today. <laughs> she knew she always felt it in her spirit. <laughs> Actually, I really am glad she's here today. Are you? Yeah, I made a list of questions. Oh, oh. well, good. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I did. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> well, we're talking about forgiveness today. We'll just throw it out there mm. because it's so important. We don't need to sugarcoat it. We don't need mm-hmm. to warm up to it. Everybody in our lives at different times needs to forgive someone, yeah. needs to forgive ourselves, yeah. whatever it may be. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to hear from Joyce explaining about forgiveness and exactly what it is and why it's so important. And then we'll come back and we'll all talk it out together. Matthew six twelve through 15, maybe a familiar scripture, but I want you to see the word. So let's put it up. And forgive us our debts as we have forgiven, left, and remitted, and let go of the debts, and have given up the resentment against our debtors. Now, pay attention to that because we probably really don't want God to do that, but that's the way He does it. We really would not want God to forgive us the way we forgive others. (laughs) And how many years have we prayed that Lord's Prayer and we think it sounds so spiritual and so holy? Listen to what you're saying. God, the same way I forgive other people, that's the way I want you to forgive me. Sometimes we kind of sort of do the official I forgive you thing. But that's different from total forgiveness. Now, if somebody's been abusing you, total forgiveness doesn't even always mean restoration of the relationship. But it is about how you talk about them, how you feel about them, how you pray for them, what you would like to see happen to them. How you respond when you hear they've been blessed. Oh, come on, we're going to dive in today. I have to help you get over this. I have fought this battle myself. And I'm just telling you, you're going to have no quality of life until you get over these things. And you have to get good at it because this is not one of those one time in a life trials. You're going to have this many, many, many times in your life. Many times. And don't think just because you go to church, you won't get offended there because you will. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive people their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up the resentment, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, now come on, let's act like we believe this today. Let's don't just read it. Let's don't just pray the Lord's Prayer as some rote repetition because we think it sounds spiritual. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up the resentment, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. That's a big statement. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It is. She made such a great point that we really don't want God to forgive us the way we forgive other people. Even just sitting here listening to it, I'm going like... Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> you want to take it back? <laughs> right. I, I've been that? teaching that for years, but it's just like, wow. I mean, if that's yeah. really true, and we know it is because it's the Bible, mm-hmm. we better change the way we do things a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It kind of makes me rethink how I've handled so many different situations because I thought I have forgiven, 
but do my actions afterwards, is that is that how God is forgiving me? Probably not. So mm. like I forgive a little bit. Yeah. And then I get mad again and I take it back. Mm-hmm. And then maybe I'll take another step forward, a little bit of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Then I'll get hurt a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And I'll stay mad for a while and not talk to you. Uh-huh. I, you know, I, I don't uh-huh. want God doing that with me. You Throw know? some guilt in there every exactly, few days. Exactly, right? Uh-huh. Any little jab I can get in or something I can say to somebody else. Oh, that yeah. maybe makes them mad at them too. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. I don't want God Good. treating me that way. I mean, Ouch. If we just sat and thought about what we just heard for about an hour, it's like, it puts a little bit of the reverential fear of God it in does, you. It's yeah. like, this is really, really something that's important. Mm-hmm. And like you said earlier, everybody's faced with this. I was thinking about a girl who told me one time that she counted how many times in one week she had an opportunity to be offended (laughs) and had to decide rather Mm -hmm. to forgive Mm -hmm. or to take the offense. And she said it was 40 times Wow! in one week. And that is probably just an average week. I mean, it may not have been anything out of the ordinary. It's just the way it is. I don't think we realize how often we do have to just decide to let it go or to believe the best or to... Mm -hmm. So if you... if you soak that stuff up all the time, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. I love what you said, too, that you have to decide to do it because you almost do have to dis- like decide in the morning, whatever happens today, I will, like pre-deciding that you're going to forgive regardless of what happens. Yeah, I wake up in the morning now and I say, like, God, give me an unoffendable heart. Like, oh, please, yeah, okay. because I, I can easily walk in offense. I'm like, well, uh, you know, like, <laughs> I'm all, like, but I've really especially these past few years have been intentionally trying to wake up and say, God, please guard my heart so that I can be unoffendable. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like help me to let things kind of, not where I walk in, like, and be like aloof of things, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. but that I let things kind of roll off. And I have gotten a lot better and I'm not, I'm not where I want to be yet, mm-hmm. but I have gotten a lot better with like forgiving yeah. and letting things go a little quicker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honestly, because I know Especially, I have a lot of, and everybody has a lot of reasons to be angry at people or be frustrated with people. But just with what I've walked through these past few years, I just like, I, I just don't, I don't want the weight of being yeah. mad. It's, it's, it's heavy. Yeah, it's, that's the thing. It's, it's heavy. It's not worth it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not. It like, it's heavy. It's mm-hmm. heavy to yeah. be angry all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. And it, it like, it robs you of, of, of the present. Yeah. It, it, and, and I. And, and like I feel sometimes I was feeling justified in being angry, sure, and being upset and being, oh yeah, you know, There's wanting a, to get a back. A lot you know? of reasons for people sure. to be offended, mm-hmm. to be justifiably angry. Yeah, but like you said, we can't we can't live in that. No, I I didn't want I don't want to live in it. I, I and I've literally seriously this past year especially. I try to wake up because I, like other than even the fear, I wake up now with so much more gratitude because. Satan really dealt like he was really warm with me with Mm -hmm. feeling like I was alone Mm -hmm. in a lot of things because I was so angry at people and so disappointed in people. I really was like, God, where were you when all this stuff was happening? Like, did you abandon me? So like that was a season. This past season has been difficult. Me and God have been really wrestling. Like, where were you? Like, Mm -hmm. how did this happen? And you let it happen. And how did you let it happen for so long? Like, and then you let me find out. And then it just all went. It just went worse you know once I found out and so I was mad at God you know I was really mad at God and so honestly like I have that fear of God but now I have so much more gratitude towards him too because because I feel his love now I feel like I'm grateful for him even allowing me to go through that angry season with him Mm -hmm. you know I think if we think about our offenses toward God Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I mean there's nothing that anybody has done to me or to you, or to any of us, that's greater than our sins and offenses mm-hmm. yeah. against God, mm-hmm. and how merciful He is to us, mm-hmm. and how many things we do that we don't even realize we do. Mm-hmm. You know, David prayed that God would forgive him for his unconscious faults, <laughs> for even things that he didn't know about, and I pray that real often, because mm-hmm. there's no telling how many times a day I mean, if God wanted to get mad and stay mad every time we did something wrong, he'd have to be mad at us all the time. Yeah. So that helps, too, if we think about, well, yeah, what you did was wrong, mm-hmm. but, you know, I've done a lot worse. 
I, yeah. I think it's really good to talk about some of the very practical things that, that we've all dealt with mm-hmm. because it really helps other people. I mean, Jay was just doing that and mm-hmm. talking about what what you've been through with your yeah. divorce in this last yeah. season. And I think it gives hope to other people to think, yeah, I, f- I feel that way or I have felt that way, but she's able to forgive. She's able to forgive. God forgives me. Mm-hmm. You know, how can I move forward? So Aaron, are there particular areas for you that you've had to really deal with this forgiveness thing? Sure. One of them I'm going to save. I want to talk. It's my question for Joyce. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> then okay. No, that no. one. Don't, we're not leaving until it's answered. Um, but I was thinking about this. A, a few years ago, um, I had, it was my first leadership position here. And so somebody left, and I had to go through all their emails. And so I found emails about me and mm. how I was young and didn't deserve this and all this stuff. And I thought, oh, my goodness. I, I was already insecure, and then I had to read all this stuff that people were saying about me. I found something else on the internet about me as well as a person, as a leader, and so I, I remember... That's terrible. It was awful. Wow. But and this is where it's easy to get offended for other people, too, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. you're nice and you love me. <laughs> I, I know, I what? know. Who was it? <laughs> but I, I had to fight really hard because I knew God was putting me in that position for a reason, and I could only do the best that I could do. And maybe there was truth to what they were saying. Maybe I was naive or I don't remember. I don't even remember what they said. But I had to choose to not dwell on what they said and forgive them. I never got to talk to them about it because they were gone. But I had to choose to forgive for my own like freedom Mm -hmm. and to not be held back from what God was calling me to do. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was hard because there was no closure. I didn't get to have a conversation about it. I just had to decide in my own mind, this is not who you are. This is not you. Like learn from this. But do your best and yeah. I like what you said though that if you didn't do that, that God wouldn't be able to work in your life and in this new role for you the way that you wanted yeah. Him to, the way that you wanted to be used by Him. Because I could see how it would have held me back. I would have held yeah. myself back because of my own insecurities about what I heard or read. But I also there was enough stubbornness in me that I wasn't going to let that person stop what God was doing, you know? Yeah. So. Well, a lot of times we have insecurities that they have to be taken care of on this level mm-hmm. in order for us to go to this level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I experienced that every, I could look back in my ministry and each time that God has promoted me to another level, I've experienced rejection mm-hmm. Interesting. on the level that I was on. Mm-hmm. And I've really learned from that, that rejection is the biggest tool that Satan uses to try to keep us yeah. from going forward. Hmm. And I mean, the last time I was leaving my position at the church and going out into this ministry that I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that we now have, uh-huh. but that didn't exist then. Yeah, you didn't except, know what it was yeah, going yeah. on. It was like, go, I heard God say, go north, south, east, and west. Mm-hmm. And nobody knew me. I didn't, I mean, it was a huge right. step of faith. I mean, I was getting judgment and criticism and accusation, everything from you're full of yourself and you're just, you know, on and on and on. And it was so hurtful to me. Mm-hmm. And it took me a good three years to get over it. But I realized many years later that if that wouldn't have happened, those people that did that to me, they would have been the ones that I would have wanted to have taken with me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and been on the staff of this ministry. Mm -hmm. And it would have been even more dangerous to me then than now. And so, look how much better it turned out. Yeah. And so, yeah, (laughs) no, no, hello, you got it. Just saying. (laughs) Even even when things are hard like that, Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not God doing it. It's not even God... Letting something happen. Yeah. People are people make their own choices, right, yeah, they make wrong people. choices. Yeah. But mm-hmm. God is good enough to use mm-hmm. even the bad things that people do to our benefit. Sure. Yeah. Mm. And I think something something with that is like you were saying, it forced me to go to him. Right. Because I couldn't rely on their validation of right. Aaron, you're doing a great job, keep it up. That that taught me early on in leadership that I have to continually point my my head to him to get my mm-hmm. validation, not right. in the people I'm working with. Yeah. yeah. And something you said about um, when you were talking about, like, 
even though you didn't get closure. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. Like Mm -hmm. you want to have, like, that's how you know that you've forgiven because you've had a conversation, you get the closure. Well, I know I didn't get closure at all, you know, and that's a hard place to, for, to say, I forgive you, even though I don't, I don't get a, well, I got an, I'm sorry, but it was like, I'm sorry, but then kept doing all the junk. But it, you know, so that doesn't Not feel like sure. a sorry, you know. But I'm I'm learning more that forgiveness. People say this all the time, you know, like forgiveness is not about the other person; it's for you. Mm-hmm. And I'm learning that more and more now. So I don't have to get the closure. I don't have to get the I'm sorry. It's not. It's not about hearing anything from the other person. It's relieving. This is something I've just been thinking about, like relieving this person, people. Period. Um, of of dictating how my emotions are mm-hmm. like That's good. if I'm happy or sad, mm-hmm. like, like I, I want to let go of that. I don't want people's actions to determine my mood yeah. or my, right. like, so I've just been, it's like, I'm, I don't care if I get a, I'm sorry for you. I'm letting you go because I don't want to give anyone but God that authority mm-hmm. in my life. Because I was realizing I was like, people would do stuff. I'd get mad or people, I'd be happy. And it's like, people are, I'm people's puppets at times, yeah, you know, yeah. like, and yeah. I don't want to live like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I had a really good friend ask me the question and she was very upset about something. And she said, but I don't have to forgive them yet because they haven't asked me to. <laughs> if they ask me to, I'll have to forgive them. But, and, and I'm thinking it's just such a natural thing for so many of us to wait mm-hmm. yeah. for that. <laughs> you know, I don't have to deal with this yet. Mm-hmm. And if they ask me to forgive them, I, I will. But you're right, that, that forgiveness issue is so much more about our hearts yeah. that we, if we wait for somebody else, it may never come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's not the key anyway. It, it's about what God wants to do in our lives. And even when somebody comes and says they're sorry, I'm not saying that it doesn't help at all. But like, my mother didn't tell me she was sorry for what she let my dad do to me for 30 years. Mm. And I can't necessarily say that once she said it, made me feel right (laughs) it doesn't change anything (laughs) and I I guess I just thought it was sad that she waited that long Mm -hmm. to say anything and so what is closure really anyway you know once you've had your heart ripped open by somebody do you ever really yeah get it closed (laughs) yeah I guess I think part of it is wanting just that honestly that validation that like you wronged me. So right. tell it me. is. I want to hear it. Yeah. I want somebody to say I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. and I, it's, it's hard also to say, to tell you I forgive you when I don't think you deserve it. And like like I'm giving you the power back. Mm-hmm. Because until I forgive you, I'm holding the power. Mm-hmm. And once I say I forgive you, I'm moving past this, it's saying, okay, well, it's, now it's equal again. Well, before yeah. we continue, can we? because I want to make sure people understand this the biggest detriment to forgiveness is that people don't understand that forgiving somebody doesn't necessarily change how you feel about them. Mm-mm. This has nothing to do That's with good. feelings. And that, yeah. that is the biggest problem. People think, well, I haven't forgiven you because I still feel a certain way about you. Mm-hmm. And it was so helpful to me when God taught me that forgiveness is not a feeling. It's mm-hmm. a decision about how you're going to treat people. Yeah. So mm-hmm. in the opening statement, it's it's a decision to not talk bad about them, to pray for them, mm-hmm. to even help them if they were in a position where they needed help and you could help them, to not spread rumors if you hear they've been blessed. You know, if somebody has hurt you, you hear they've been blessed, it's like, oh, well, you... There's a few things you just don't know, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you just don't want to. And so it's really, it's so important for people to realize you, you'll you never think you've forgiven anybody if you wait to feel better about mm-hmm. them. I mean, I've shared that all the years that I took care of my mom and dad in the nursing home, there was never one time that I went to visit them that I really wanted to go. I did it because I felt like it was the right thing to do, and it was what God wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. And I think... You know, love is as much about doing the right thing as it is feeling the right way about somebody. So how do you know if you've truly forgiven? I think it's by how you treat people, by how you treat them. You know, I mean, I know that I forgave my mom and dad because 
I took care of them until they died. I did what God mm-hmm. asked me to do. Mm-hmm. I was not, I didn't mistreat them in any way. I wasn't mean to them. I provided for them, and I took care of them good. And I did that because of my love for God. Mm-hmm. And uh, But I couldn't, you know, God didn't expect me to have gooey, gushy feelings mm-hmm. about them because of what they had done to me. Yeah. Sure. And I remember my mother asking me one time, how do you feel about me? Hmm. And I thought, well, here we go, you know. <laughs> and I'm, I thought, I'm not going to lie to her. And I just told her, I said, you know, I don't feel about you the way that a girl should feel about her mother because of what you let happen to me. But I said, I do love you as a child of God, and I will always make sure that you're taken care of. And so yeah. that's... you. To me, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to choose to do the right thing no mm-hmm. matter what somebody else does. We choose to do the right thing. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. so good. And like, Also with that like forgiveness, I've just realized it's not forgetting yeah. or excusing the, mis- the, you know, the bad behavior. And when you say that, like, I know for a fact that this particular season that I've just walked through, I would not have been able to do it without everybody watching this, you... In your testimony, you guys, because I did some last week. I don't think I, I don't know if I told y'all. No. I, my ex is getting married. Okay. Y'all have been on this little journey with me, right? My ex is getting married and he's getting married very quickly and soon. And I knew that my daughter was about, well, I found out that they, you know, that my daughter's in the wedding and they're about to move in together. <laughs> Whew. They're about to move in together and all that good stuff. And that was hard. Yeah, but sure I was. knew the right thing to do was to bless them, forgive them and have a conversation because we're now in this thing together. Even though my daughter's 18, we're still, mm. we're still like, I guess you call it a blended family. I don't know. Like we're now in <laughs> yeah. this and I, I'm not trying to be anybody's best friend, but I'm saying if my daughter's <laughs> living there, like they're, we're about to be yeah. connected, you know? So yeah. I was just like, it's the right thing to do to, speak to you know her and him and so we got on a, I requested a call we had a call I was like hey I just wanted to introduce myself to you guys and or wow. to you and blessings to you all in your marriage and I really was genuinely good for you I yeah. I, so and this, and I, I, I know it was God but I know because of your testimony but I mean, of look what, at how far God's brought you mm-hmm. in the last year yeah to be able to do that yeah and that's exactly the kind of behavior that God is looking for, and it takes spiritual maturity. And you did yourself such a favor in doing that. Yeah. Because you could have lost your relationship with your daughter. Yeah. yeah. If you would have handled it a different way. Yeah. And just been full of bitterness and angry all over again. And it's really God does not tell us to forgive people for them. Mm-hmm. It's not because they deserve it. It's because we deserve it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure you didn't. Really oh. look forward to doing that. You no, didn't really I, feel like no, doing it. No, my heart it. was, it was beating. I was nauseous the entire like time before, right. you know. But I knew it was the right thing to do. I thanked her for in, like in, including my daughter in the wedding. Like, and I, as soon as I got off the phone, I kept the, I kept the call short. Mm-hmm. You know, because I could feel myself about to take a little turn. Okay, gotta go. Us, you guys. And so and let me t- bye, y'all. You know, I had to stop before before I went too far. But I remember when, like, this was just like a week ago now. So I hung up the phone, and I remember shaking yeah. like crazy, and just cr- I cried. I couldn't control the emotions. I almost had like it felt like a little like a panic attack, but it only lasted for about like five or ten minutes. I was like, God, you have to help me, mm-hmm. and then. I took a deep breath I, after I prayed. I was like, I, I let go of it. It's nothing I can do about the situation. This whole journey has felt like a dream. It's yeah. felt like this isn't happening to me. Like this, none of this is happening, you know, but in that moment, it still felt like a dream. Nothing really changed. It still felt hurt. It didn't feel as hard as it, as yeah. hurtful as it's been feeling, but I felt like a, a weight lifted off of me because mm-hmm. I did it, but I still felt sad. But how good do you feel that you did, that you know in your heart that you did what God would have you Amazing. do? Amazing. Yeah. I feel so great. That's the yeah. thing. That's, I feel so great yeah. about it. And I didn't want to do it, but no. I I knew that there was the right thing yeah. to do. This is no kudos to me because I was like, God, what would you make me do? You yeah, know? but so proud of you. So no, proud of you. you. Yeah. Thank you, friend. That's awesome. So, that's a good lesson for everybody right there. Yeah. 
I think there's so much to be learned in doing the hard things. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to have to be in that situation. And like you said, God, maybe that wasn't His master plan for us, but people make choices and there's sin in the world. And we all have to make really hard decisions. Mm -hmm. And for you to learn, for all of us to learn when we do make that decision, that God will be there for us. He's not going to let us down, and He's going to help us. That that makes mm-hmm. such a difference. I, I've really um, talking about trying to be unoffendable. I've spent a lot of time learning that when you get these little um, hurts and nicks and bruises of things that just happen every day, mm-hmm. that the sooner I forgive, yeah. the quicker they heal. Right. Mm-hmm. And if I don't, even the little things, you know, somebody said something or whatever, somebody did something. It, if I don't, they those wounds get deeper, yeah. right. and you replay them in your mind, and they get bigger maybe than they ever were, or you share it with somebody else, and together you go, meh, 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 and it becomes a, a, <laughs> a scar and a really right. deep wound when it was never meant to be that. So if, if I can jump on these things right away and choose to forgive as soon as I can, it's made a huge difference for me. Yeah. But kind of like you're talking about, I had one situation years ago where just out of the blue, I had, um, I guess what I would call it, a, a terrible betrayal from a friend, really, really severe, just blatant lies and totally shocked. And I was so hurt. And when you get something like that out of nowhere, out of nowhere, and you're completely blown away and, and just shocked, I, I think the the hard thing to do is to begin with, okay, I, I need to forgive right now. Mm-hmm. You know, I need to do it as soon as I can. And while that's true, there there is a little bit of preparation that you kind of have to do for mm-hmm. that wound. You, you got to start to clean it, you mm-hmm. know? You can't just put a Band-Aid on it or it will come back up later. Right. Mm-hmm. And I really learned that through that time that... Um, I had a lot of work in my heart to do that was part of that forgiveness process. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just a, okay, God, I'm going to forgive, and I'm not going to think about this anymore. I'm going to move on, forgive and forget. It it doesn't work that way. It it was God showing me step by step by step, this is what you do first. You know, Mm -hmm. you you make the decision to forgive. Mm -hmm. And then you stop wallowing in it. (laughs) You stop reliving it. You stop thinking, what will I say next time I see that person? Mm -hmm. You know, so many steps that he showed me that really helped me to get through that really deep wound that I'm so grateful for because it's taught me so much for the future. And like you said, I think it did help prepare me for God, for, for what God wanted to do in different areas of my life. One of the first things that God wants us to do that's so helpful is to pray for the people that hurt you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so hard. And it's really hard in the beginning. It is. It gets easier. Yeah. It's, you know. <laughs> oh, it's don't, don't make us feel <laughs> oh, bad. It's, it's like, not that yeah. hard. I, I didn't well, even want to read a certain book of the Bible because it was his name. I was <laughs> <laughs> like, skip that one. <laughs> I'll tell you what helped me. Okay. I used to think that if I prayed for God to bless somebody, you know, he's going to give them all these nice new things mm-hmm. and promote them. And, you know, but that's not really when you pray for God to bless somebody who's in sin or who's done something wrong. Probably the first thing he's going to try to bless them with is some truth and reality mm-hmm. yeah. about their own behavior. So we make a mistake when we think the Bible says pray that's for it. them, really bless and do not curse them. Mm-hmm. And that literally means pray for them. Don't say evil things about them, but say good things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with yeah. that, so, I'm praying, bless them really good, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> like Show them some really good oh, stuff. Oh, bless them, Lord. <laughs> but bless, I, that, all the blessings. Really, I mean, you know, the praying for my dad all those years mm-hmm. finally brought him to the reality that what he had done was wrong. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, long story short, and everybody's heard it, he finally was saved as a result of, I'll never forget when he looked at Dave and he said, he said, Dave, most men in your position would have killed me. Mm-hmm. And all you ever did was show me love. Wow. wow. And That's so like statement. what you did in this last situation, <laughs> in a way you did, not that you're trying to do something to them, but you did more to them than if you would have 
openly come against them because mm-hmm. that kind of love, you can't argue with that. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, what what can you do with that? Yeah. There, you can't find any fault with that. Yeah. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, like, I, it, it immediately made me think of some of the things that I'd gone through. I think at the when we first, first, first started the, the podcast, I would talk about my issue with my, my father. Mm-hmm. And that was before I even found out about the infidelity or anything, you know, and that was such a hard thing, you know, going through that forgiveness with my dad. And in that moment, it felt like the worst, hardest thing that I could have ever done. But forgiving my dad, even though my dad never really apologized, like our relationship now in the in these past couple of years has just catapult it you know mm-hmm. it's nothing he's done I literally just like you know what I'm tired of being mad at this man yeah. you know no. like I'm just, it's exhausting I'm tired of being mad <laughs> I, you know I just don't I'm too I'm just too old and been around the mountain too many times <laughs> to just spend another day I mean anger is exhausting it, it, it is. is it's hard work it you know, is to stay angry and to think all those negative thoughts and yeah you know just be mad every time somebody you don't like gets yeah. blessed or mm-hmm. somebody likes somebody that you don't like. It's like just something that's really helped me is to realize God is only going to hold me accountable for me. Mm-hmm. He's not going to hold me accountable for what somebody else does. But when I stand before him, I'm only going to be held accountable for me and what I've done. Mm-hmm. So my job is to do the right thing. By God's grace, with his help, no matter what anybody else does. And no, that's not easy, but it is easier than the other choice. Yeah. 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 It's so good to then like what you said, is take ownership too of your role. Right. In the in the situation. Like yeah. I know I had a bad attitude with my dad sometimes. I know I wasn't the best wife. So it's like those things that doesn't justify what anybody else does, yeah. but it definitely shifts the perspective on like, God, how can I grow from this situation? Right. How can I learn from this situation? So that ownership piece is very, very vital in the healing and forgiveness process. It's like it you is, said yeah. before, heal forgiving yourself too. Yeah. Like yeah. forgive myself for not necessarily being the best daughter all the time, mm-hmm. not being the best wife all the time, not being the best friend all the time. You know, like God work on me so that I can learn from my mistakes. Unforgiveness and, yeah. is probably the single biggest problem that we have in the body of Christ. Hmm. Oh, I believe it that. It probably opens more doors yeah. for the enemy in people's yeah. lives than anything else because the Bible says in Ephesians 4, when you're angry, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Mm-hmm. So God never tells you not to ever get angry. Right. That's a... That's a I'm so glad. <laughs> that's a, Well, it's a normal human right, emotion. Right. Mm-hmm. But he says, when you're angry, do not sin. Mm, yeah. So you feel that anger, but how you handle it, <laughs> what you do with it right. is the question. Yeah. Don't let the sun go down in your anger. Don't get the devil. Don't get the devil any such foothold in your life. So we actually do open a door and invite the devil into our life by staying mad. Well, that, that needs to be said again, <laughs> seriously, because there are so many of us right now who are giving the devil that opportunity, and we don't even realize it. We don't even know what's happening. Yeah, our people wonder, why am I having this problem? Why did this happen to me? Well, mm-hmm. right. well, maybe you opened the door for the enemy mm-hmm. by not being Through obedient to God in forgiving somebody. You know, I, I prayed this morning, mm-hmm. hopefully thousands and thousands of people will hear this see this and forgive somebody but even if one person <laughs> yeah will forgive somebody that they're hating or holding something against the world that we live in today is sick yeah and it's it's in pain this whole planet is like a ball of pain and it's mostly over this kind of stuff yeah, yeah. it's people hating people because they're different than they are they're hating people because of something that happened you know, way back over here somewhere that nobody can do anything about now. The answer to so many of our problems is to forgive and to walk in love. Mm -hmm. This verse, Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. And it's so easy to brush over that. But when when we were studying for this, that tenderhearted word really struck me. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm really angry Mm -hmm. and when I'm holding unforgiveness, my heart is hard, (laughs) you know, it becomes like a rock. And, you know, I I can be really hard-headed. I I told Aaron this 
I had to do something where somebody asked me to use three words to describe how to describe myself, and I asked my husband, and one of the words he threw out was hard headed. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I can be hard-headed, but I prefer like persistent or Absolutely. determined. Those Absolutely. are better words. But anyway, that, that's just a little side note for everyone. I'm not angry. I've forgiven, forgiven him. him about yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> but I don't want my heart to be hard yeah. because it's really easy. They're kind of connected. My brain and my heart are kind of connected. And um, I, I think very logically. And, and when you think about something a lot, your heart goes with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be hard-hearted. And I've seen, I've been so blessed all over the world to, to interview so many amazing people and see incredible stories of forgiveness. Right. I remember a story of a, a man whose brother was murdered, and he went to the prison and forgave the man who murdered his <sighs> brother. And they became good friends, and he <laughs> was an advocate for his release. And... Stories of child soldiers who the only reason they were able to get through what they got through was because at some point they had to forgive. And people who clawed their way out of mass graves who were left for dead, mm -hmm. who had to forgive the people that did that to them. I hear those things and I think of what Jesus forgave. Mm -hmm. I think of him saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's the key. I they get know not so what they do. overwhelmed by that because yeah. the things that the things that people are able to forgive is only through the grace of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it really is a gift when we when we can do that for one another. And when I see your stories, and when I see what Christ was able to do in other people in the world, I know that I I need to take that step to make the decisions mm -hmm. not to let my heart get hard, right. to treat each other with love. I, I, man, I would like to ask my question now. It rolls nicely into this. Please do. I've been yes. it up. I would know? love to hear it because <laughs> I... I'm starting to say, I'm waiting for this I'm question. I'm curious. <laughs> so good. But I just know I'm not the only one who's going to have this kind of question. Um Lots of our friends are going to want to know how you'd answer this. But Mike and I were talking recently. We've been through a year and had some stuff happen. And it and so we've gone through this process of forgiveness. And so it took a while. Like I, I couldn't get to it right away. Um, but we got to the point where I, f I felt like I had forgiven him. But things will come up and I'll, I'll get triggered. And, and all the pain will come back. And... And I know it hurts him because he'll say, I thought, I thought you forgave me. I thought we've moved past this. And yes, my response is always, yes, I have. But also like there's pain that I now have to work through. Mm -hmm. So how do you, you can't forgive and forget, but how do you forgive and not keep going back to that pain? Or what is the, what's that look like? Well, you know, the word forget is kind of interesting. You know, mm -hmm. that in, in Isaiah it says, do not earnestly remember the past things. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it there's a difference in forgetting something and sitting around and thinking about it all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sure, I can bring back up, and to be honest, every once in a while, I'll find myself drifting off into thinking about some of the things my dad did to me. Yeah. And I'll start feeling upset, and, and then I'm like, nope. Not going there. So you can you can remember if you want to, but you don't have to. <laughs> you can choose not to. And yeah. so in a way, we can forget. Not that you could never bring it back up. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like don't earnestly remember. Don't just sit around and remember it and rehearse it. And that's why it's important not to just keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about mm -hmm. it. And yes, when you're hurt like you were, it's like having a bad fall. There's a bruise. Mm -hmm. There's a wound. Mm -hmm. There's a scab. You know, it's like healing sometimes hurts worse. You know, if you, mm. if you fall and you, you hurt yourself, it hurts. But then when that wound starts to form a scab, mm -hmm. it actually hurts even worse. Mm -hmm. So it does take some time to work through it. But that still doesn't mean that you haven't forgiven. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. That because I can, when this happened last week, when we had this conversation, I can remember at what point, whatever happened, it was it was dumb. 
it was it was a dumb thing. But I, in my mind, I flipped over to connect why that made me mad. And I could just feel myself like fueling my own anger and reacting in a way that was totally uncalled for. But I justified it as, well, I can be mad. Yeah. I forgive you, but I'm still mad. So <laughs> I, can, I can see how I could have made a different choice to stop thinking about that and just right. not go there. Yeah. One of the things that I've been praying intentionally since all the stuff that I've been dealing with was that... Like, I can't wipe away the memory, you know, of what happened. And I can't exactly wipe away the fact that I felt the way I felt when it all, when I found all of it out and it kept happening, you know, and it's still happening. You know, like the, the story doesn't just stop, you know, um, mm-hmm. you have to learn how to live with that, you know. So I've been praying and asking God intentionally, God, please take the, the pain away from the memory. Let it like mm-hmm. let the memory just be a fact. Mm-hmm. It's a fact that it happened, but I, I pray that the, the pain that's affiliated with it leaves. Like, that's one of the things yeah. that I've been intentionally praying. Like, I can't help, like, when I see people in love on a, on a movie. Like, I can't help sure. when I see people talk about marriage, when I see people talk about, you know, have their family together, you know, or things that I thought we were going to be. Like, those things trigger me instantly. Sure. And it, it instantly makes me go back to, like, like it's almost like it pulls me back <laughs> into where I was. And like mm-hmm. you said, Joyce, like you have to say like, no, I like, mm-hmm. yes, that's a fact, but I don't have to feel that pain. Like, and also remembering that if you let it, what happened to you, even though it was wrong, if you let it, God can use it to make you a better person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was really helpful to me when I realized, when I got to the point where I thought, you know, I said for years, if only I wouldn't have been abused. If only I wouldn't have been abused, thinking my life would be this or my life would be that. And I know I missed so much in childhood, I don't even know what I missed. You know, I don't, I don't know what it's like to have a father that you could go to and sit on their lap and ask for advice. I mean, I have, I, I'm just like totally lost when it comes to that. But I do know that uh, uh, when I finally, I came to the point one day, I thought, you know what, I can't even really say I'm sorry that it happened to me because I know that the fact that it did happen and that God walked me through it, it's made me who I am today. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't God for it to happen, right. but you will turn out to be a better person than you would have been if you let God use it for that purpose. Yeah. And I you feel helped it so too. many other people also i mean what you're sharing will help so many other people too yeah Mm -hmm. along the way all those different stories you know of forgiveness that i've heard i never heard anyone once ever say i wish i would have held on to it a little bit longer (laughs) i wish i would have not forgiven yeah Uh, that's good everyone is is moving forward because they forgave right not wishing they would have stayed mad longer yeah and so you're right god god will use this in in all of our lives what whatever it is that we give to him he'll use in a positive way for our good for his good and for the good of others yeah one verse i love that it's not about forgiveness in particular but first corinthians 13 where it talks about what love is and so i would going through that recently and thought it's patient and kind. And so to, to take whatever situation you're upset about and apply those words to it, I can't change their behavior, but that's how I need to respond. That does make you a better person. I mean, that, that does help you grow mm-hmm. to where God wants to take you when you're, that's your focus, not why you're so angry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is great stuff. I, I mean, I really just think several people listening have maybe had something that's seeped into their spirit. Maybe you're thinking about forgiving. Maybe you're ready to make that choice. Maybe you've made it as we've been talking. I don't know. But I'm so grateful for all of you sharing oh, what, you. what you've been through and what God's doing. I always hate to hear somebody say, I'll never forgive you. Oh, mm. yeah. Every, anytime I hear that, I think, you know, don't, don't make that vow to yourself that you'll never forgive somebody because your, your life basically is on hold. Mm. Until you make the decision to forgive. Yeah, and if you don't want to be stuck where you are right now, 
Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a good way to get out of that rut is to right. make the choice to forgive. Well, we do have a free resource for you that will be so helpful. It's Joyce's booklet, Simply Called Forgiveness. It's a free download. So if you go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, you can get that free download right there. Uh, we just pray for all of you right now in Jesus' name that you can do what you need to do, that He will help you, that He will walk you through this, that every step that you go forward and you want to take two back, that He'll just continue pulling you right along with Him. You're not doing this alone when you do it in His power and not yours. Thank you all for being with us. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.